It's been a fun year for astronomers, astronomers, that's the right word, professional and amateur alike, with the discovery and tracking of the Three Eye Atlas Comet. So President Trump and NASA are also attempting to usher in a new golden age of space exploration with the Artemis II test flight potentially happening early next year. So a lot happening up there in that galaxy of ours. We're going to bring in somebody who knows a lot about it. On, uh, Of course, space exploration is a theoretical physicist and the author of Quantum Supremacy, that book, How the Quantum Computer Revolution Will Change Everything, Dr. Michio Kaku. Uh, it is so good to have you back. So I mean, it's been a kind of a busy year for people who love outer space. And the, the you know, the three eye uh, Atlas comet got so much attention. Why the intrigue? Why the conspiracy theories about the comet? And what was your conclusion about it? Well, you know, some people are saying that the comet was created by aliens from outer space. So this is something right out of the comic books, something right out of a motion picture film. The fact that some people believe that comets that sail through the solar system are actually being piloted by an unknown alien being from outer space. Now, you can't disprove it because we have to have raw data. But the data seems to indicate that it is natural, that is natural forces of gravity and, and cosmic radiation from outer space are guiding this, this gigantic object as it barrels its way past our solar system, not by aliens. Oh, okay. So we're going to say it's just a rock. <laughs> um, President Trump, uh, he's intrigued and kind of been very active in this term, getting the space program on track with the goal of heading back to the moon uh, by 28, uh, maybe a lunar outpost by 2030. Let me ask you, first of all, is that realistic? And, and what's the purpose or need of us going back to the moon? Well, that's a matter of debate because some people are saying on to Mars. Why bother to stop at the moon when we've been there, we've done that, <laughs> but Mars is the next uh, object of investigation. But remember that Artemis is a device that is going to land on the moon once a year, every year for the next several years. So this is already in the bag. We already have the rocket. It's been tested. Starting in February of next year, it will fly by around the moon. And every year after that, in 2006, 2007, 2008, uh, I mean, in, in, in 28, we're going to go back to the moon. So quickly, I just want to ask you, um, the Artem Artemis II test, right, that is going to orbit the moon, you said, what is it looking for? I mean, and what about the dark side of the moon? Why is that so, uh, why, is it, why is it so intriguing? Well, the dark side of the moon is intriguing because we don't know much about it. Now, the Chinese have landed there, but basically it's virgin territory for explore, exploration. So we don't know much about the dark side of the moon, to be very frank. But like I said, every year, NASA plans to send a probe, not just to orbit around the moon next year, but to actually land on the moon and perhaps even to set up a colony on the moon. But of course, that's still being debated at the present time. Doc, it's good to have you as always. I know you're retiring from the City University of New York. I wish you the best and make sure you keep coming on with us. OK, I will. Thank you. The third confirmed interstellar object has passed Earth safely, but the story just took a strange turn as 3I Atlas slipped through the inner solar system and began its quiet exit back into interstellar space, a narrow window opened. Just before its closest approach, one of the most sensitive listening efforts ever directed at such an object was underway. For a brief moment, buried deep inside an ocean of radio data, something unusual appeared. It did not last long. It did not repeat, but it was enough to ignite speculation, careful scrutiny, and a reminder of how thin the line is between discovery and misinterpretation. In the hours before closest approach, the Breakthrough Listen program trained the 100-meter Robert C. Byrd Green Bank Telescope on 3i Atlas, scanning a wide swath of the radio spectrum from 1 to 12 gigahertz. This was not a casual observation. The telescope was operating at extreme sensitivity, probing for narrow-band radio signals, the kind that, if persistent and localized, could hint at technological activity rather than natural astrophysical processes. These observations were scheduled deliberately. 
the geometry of closest approach maximizes signal strength for any potential transmitter on or near the object, and even faint emissions would be most detectable during this brief interval. The observing strategy followed a strict cadence. Short on-target scans were interspersed with longer off-target scans in a repeating A-B-A-C-A-D pattern. This method is designed to separate signals originating from the sky location of interest from those produced closer to home, such as satellites, aircraft, or terrestrial transmitters. Every second of data was timestamped, frequency resolved down to just a few hertz, and logged for post-processing. By the end of the session, the telescope had accumulated an enormous data set, far more signals than any human could ever inspect manually. When the data were processed using the Turbo SETI pipeline, the scale of the challenge became immediately apparent. Hundreds of thousands of hits appeared above the initial detection thresholds. At such sensitivity, the radio sky is crowded with interference, instrumental artifacts, and transient emissions from human technology. Most of these signals are expected and quickly filtered out. The real task is not finding signals, but eliminating them. Before radio telescopes were turned toward 3i Atlas, the object had already been drawing attention for reasons that had nothing to do with signals or SETI. The brief radio anomaly that later surfaced did not arrive as a standalone mystery. It was added to a growing list of unusual characteristics that researchers had been cataloging since the object's motion was first analyzed in detail. Long before any narrowband spike appeared in radio data, orbital dynamicists were already questioning whether 3i Atlas could be treated as a tip typical interstellar interloper. Its behavior, geometry, and timing repeatedly placed it at the edges of what existing models comfortably explain, ensuring that every new observation, including the radio search, would be scrutinized more closely than usual. One of the earliest sources of interest was its trajectory. 3i Atlas moves opposite to the direction of planetary motion, a retrograde path that is itself not unprecedented, but what drew attention was its alignment. The object's trajectory lies within roughly 5 degrees of the ecliptic plane, the same flattened disk in which the planets orbit the Sun. For a randomly arriving interstellar body, such alignment is statistically rare, with estimates placing the likelihood near 0.2%. While not impossible, this configuration immediately stood out as improbable. The discomfort deepened when researchers noted that the object's incoming direction lies within about 9 degrees of the position of the famous WOW signal, the unexplained radio burst detected in 1977. No physical connection is implied, and astronomers are careful to stress that spatial coincidences alone do not establish meaning. Still, the probability of such directional overlap occurring by chance has been estimated at roughly 0.6%, small enough to warrant attention, even among those skeptical of drawing broader conclusions. Timing and spatial geometry added another layer to the discussion. The arrival of 3i Atlas was such that it passed within tens of millions of kilometers of Mars, Venus, and Jupiter, while remaining effectively unobservable from Earth at perihelion, the point when objects are typically closest to the sun and often easiest to study. This combination was unusual enough to prompt closer examination. Of particular note is its projected encounter with Jupiter in March 2026, when it will pass at a distance of approximately 53.6 million kilometers, almost identical to Jupiter's hill radius, the boundary within which the planet's gravity dominates orbital stability. The odds of such a close numerical match occurring randomly have been estimated at well below 1%. While mainstream models do not attribute intent to this geometry, it has been pointed out that such a configuration would be well suited for placing objects into long-lived orbits around Jupiter, including near Lagrange points where orbital corrections require minimal energy. These observations were already being debated before any radio data were examined. Physical properties of the object further complicated attempts at classification. The nucleus of 3i Atlas appears to be several orders of magnitude more massive than those of previously observed interstellar visitors, yet it is traveling at a higher velocity than both. This combination presents a challenge for population models of interstellar debris. Current estimates suggest that interstellar space does not contain enough rocky material to naturally deliver objects of this mass into the inner solar system at a rate of once per decade. While such delivery is not ruled out, it pushes existing assumptions to their limits and raises the possibility that the object's presence is not purely the result of random sampling from a background reservoir of interstellar material. 
Observations of 3i Atlas's physical behavior only added to the complexity. Before and after perihelion, the object exhibited tightly collimated jets oriented both toward and away from the sun, including a persistent sunward jet that cannot be explained as a simple optical illusion, unlike the anti-tails seen in familiar comets. Maintaining such jets across distances approaching a million kilometers and in multiple orientations relative to the sun would require an unusual usually large and efficient active surface if driven solely by sublimation. Near perihelion, the object also exhibited non-gravitational acceleration, subtle but measurable, that must be accounted for by outgassing or other forces. While non-gravitational effects are not uncommon in small bodies, the magnitude and persistence of these effects in 3i Atlas have proven difficult to model cleanly. Chemical measurements introduced yet another anomaly. Spectroscopic observations revealed a gas plume containing significantly more nickel than iron, along with a nickel to cyanide ratio orders of magnitude higher than those observed in known comets. The likelihood of such a composition arising naturally has been estimated at below 1%. Some researchers have noted that such ratios resemble those found in industrially produced nickel alloys more closely than primitive solar system material, though natural explanations have not been ruled out. Individually, each of these features can be accommodated, sometimes uncomfortably, within existing physical frameworks. Taken together, however, they explain why the later radio anomaly was not treated as an isolated curiosity, but rather as one more unusual data point associated with an object that had already resisted simple categorization long before the radio sky was ever examined. The decision to release the radio data publicly only intensified the scrutiny surrounding 3i Atlas. This transparency is deliberate. Breakthrough Listen operates on the principle that extraordinary claims demand not secrecy but openness, that conclusions gain strength when independent researchers are able to test, challenge, and attempt to break them. In this case, public access allowed others to confirm that the narrow band spike did not survive rigorous filtering and cross-checks. At the same time, it also created space for selective interpretation, where the existence of an initial anomaly circulated faster than the context that ultimately dismissed it. That tension between openness and misreading mirrored the broader response to the object itself. Crucially, the radio observations were never the only lens through which 3i Atlas was studied. While radio telescopes listened, optical and infrared observatories continued tracking its physical behavior. Independent measurements from NASA and ESA confirmed asymmetric outgassing jets and small non-gravitational accelerations consistent with volatile release rather than propulsion. Models of the object's size gradually converged toward estimates near one kilometer, though uncertainties remain. None of these findings required an artificial explanation, yet neither did they fully dissolve the long list of statistical, geometric, and compositional peculiarities that had already placed the object under sustained examination. The picture that emerged was not one of contradiction, but of persistent complexity. As 3i Atlas continues its passage out of the inner solar system, the opportunity for study is not ending, it is changing. The object is now outbound and gradually dimming, but it remains within reach of large telescopes, expected to stay observable in the pre-dawn sky through at least the spring of 2026. Its trajectory will bring it into new geometric configurations relative to Earth, the Sun, and the outer planets, offering fresh perspectives that were not available during its closest approach. Future encounters, including its passage through Jupiter's gravitational domain, will provide additional data points, ensuring that observation of 3i Atlas remains an ongoing process rather than a closed chapter. What has emerged so far is not not evidence of extraterrestrial technology, but something equally compelling, a case study that exposes both the power and the limits of modern astronomy. The ability to rule out continuous radio transmitters weaker than a household device at interstellar distances represents a technological milestone that would have seemed implausible only decades ago. At the same time, the difficulty of reconciling all 3i Atlas's orbital, physical, and compositional characteristics within a single coherent model underscores how much remains 
remains unknown about objects shaped far beyond our solar system. Each new observation, whether it confirms expectations or deepens anomalies, helps refine the boundary between established explanation and open question. The narrow band spike that briefly appeared in the radio data was not a message, and it did not survive the scrutiny required to elevate it beyond noise. Yet its appearance was not meaningless. It demonstrated how easily genuine scientific uncertainty can emerge at the limits of detection, and how disciplined skepticism must operate alongside curiosity. In this context, the silence from 3i Atlas is not a dismissal, but a constraint, a precisely measured absence that informs future searches and sharpens the tools used to conduct them. What has emerged so far is not evidence of extraterrestrial technology, but something equally compelling, a case study that exposes both the power and the limits of modern astronomy. The ability to rule out continuous radio transmitters weaker than a household device at interstellar distances represents a technological milestone that would have seemed implausible only decades ago. At the same time, the difficulty of reconciling all 3i Atlas's orbital, physical, and compositional characteristics within a single coherent model underscores how much remains unknown about objects shaped far beyond our solar system. Each new observation, whether it confirms expectations or deepens anomalies, helps refine the boundary between established explanation and open question. The narrow band spike that briefly appeared in the radio data was not a message, and it did not survive the scrutiny required to elevate it beyond noise. Yet its appearance was not meaningless. It demonstrated how easily genuine scientific uncertainty can emerge at the limits of detection, and how disciplined skepticism must operate alongside curiosity. In this context, the silence from 3i Atlas is not a dismissal, but a constraint, a precisely measured absence that informs future searches and sharpens the tools used to conduct them. What makes 3i Atlas unusual is not that it delivered answers, but that it continues to generate questions long after its closest approach. As models are refined, datasets reanalyzed, and new observations added, interpretations will continue to evolve. The object remains a live subject of study not because it promises extraordinary conclusions, but because it persistently resists simple ones. In that sense, the real significance of 3i Atlas may not lie in what it has already revealed, but in what it continues to test about our understanding of interstellar visitors and in the discipline required to follow the evidence wherever it leads.